Hello and welcome back. My name is Stefano and today we're going to be talking about the AC Infinity Airframe T7 and how well it's been doing at cooling my server closet over the course of about a year. But before we jump right into the topic, you guys have been begging me to stop selling my hardware to strangers online and to instead sell them to you, the strangers, directly. So you can find hardware that I'm currently selling at spxlabs.com forward slash shop. Link in the video description below. The Airframe T7 has actually been doing a pretty decent job in my opinion, and the temperature of the room has basically fluctuated between 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 88 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year. And while that does sound hot, you actually have to remember that temperature is being recorded above all the actual equipment from two different thermometers. And while they do slightly disagree, they're fairly consistent. The air coming into the room is somewhere between 71 degrees Fahrenheit and 76 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the ambient temperature of the house, or the air outside as well. And also I haven't really been consistently checking that temperature. I've more or less been spot checking that in over the last three months, but every time I spot check it, it's pretty close to that. Now, while the closet temperature may actually fluctuate a lot, that's mostly due to the amount of equipment that could be running at any point in time. Sometimes I'll be running one of the Dell R330s or one of the other servers that's in there for, I don't know, maybe like a couple of weeks, days, months. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing or testing. And that doesn't seem to really affect the overall temperature of any of the hardware that's in there, regardless of what I'm running. So for instance, for a good while there, I ran the Dell R330 for about a month because it was hosting some servers that I was testing out uh, for some videos, as well as playing around with some friends. and. While the temperature of the room did rise, it didn't affect any of the other equipment in there, which is pretty good. The only piece of equipment that hasn't really been that consistent has been the Unraid server, and specifically the 3700X. And I think that's mostly due to the rising demand of that server during that specific month of July, where we saw temperatures peak at about 149 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, I think that's mostly because I was running two, an Unraid server as well as a Valheim server at the same time, and also I've been getting back into Plex, so that server's been hit with a lot more temperatures, and so that drove the average is up, and plus July was, again, one of the hottest uh, months in the year, or at least I think it was the hottest record month of the year so far. So it would kind of make sense that the temperature of that CPU be really high, and the rest of the equipment was pretty normal because they get the same about the same amount of usage basically throughout the year. What do I mean by the rest of the equipment? Well, I'm really talking about two switches because I haven't been checking the temperatures of really anything else. And the first switch is our 16 port 150 watt switch from Ubiquiti that gets basically used 24 seven 365. It is the backbone of the network. Everything is plugged into that, including the cameras outside, the access point inside the house, and basically every computer uh, that is plugged into the wall as well, including, you know, some smart devices. Now, that thing does get a lot of use, but it still has a pretty constant temperature of about 156 degrees Fahrenheit, and I use the term constant loosely. It obviously does fluctuate, but I'd still be willing to say that is a pretty or fairly constant temperature nonetheless. I also think the US 1650 watt switch is a little bit more hot because it's wedged in the middle of everything and it's getting the heat from everything below it. Uh, so I think that does drive up the temperature a little bit, but not really too much to make it anything that we have to worry about. The other piece of equipment is my 16 port 10 gig switch, also from Ubiquiti. And that one doesn't really do a whole lot, which kind of makes sense when you look at the temperature, which is about 122 degrees Fahrenheit pretty consistently throughout the year. And honestly, it just doesn't really get used except from when I'm backing up large videos for YouTube, uh, from my Mac mini all the way over to my Unraid server. I think there are about two questions that would summarize this entire video pretty well. The first one is, am I happy with the current configuration? Well, yeah. It's been exactly what I was looking for since I started doing research on how to cool the server closet from the get-go. Yes, there are more elaborate solutions out there, but I think for the money that I paid and the amount of effort that went into it, it's perfect. The Airframe T7 does leave me a little bit of headroom to grow if I wanna add additional hardware in there, but I don't really know what that threshold is. I assume it's somewhere between 200 to 300 watts of additional horsepower, but again, I don't really know. I don't really see myself getting anything else that's extremely powerful. I 
might build a second server for backups that will be really low powered and not really be producing a lot of heat. And I don't think that's gonna have any great effect on the system temperatures in that room. It may bring the room temperature up a little bit more, but that's gonna be at the very top of the closet itself and that shouldn't really affect anything else in there. And the second question is, knowing what I know now, would I do anything different? Yes and no. I would have liked to install something a bit more permanent that had a bit more of a like 10 year plan built into it. You know, something that could really allow me to scale up, you know. I was originally thinking about putting in a six inch, a four to six inch pipe in there with an exhaust fan that would pull all the hot air out of there and pump that into my AC return unit. Uh, but that would require a lot of work and a somewhat sizable increase in cost, nothing too extraordinary, but I would have had to made a larger investment nonetheless. Now, yes, that would have given me a bit more future proofness, but in reality, I don't think that was necessary because again, CPUs and equipment's getting incredibly powerful so you can do more and more with it. And they're also, you know, running at lower wattages and they're outputting less heat for the most part, at least the stuff that I'm looking at. So you tend to get a lot more for your money and as CPUs get faster, well, you can run game servers much more efficiently. And now that I'm not doing any virtualization for things like Plex or game servers, I can just get away with using lightweight containers that run extremely well on a Ryzen 3700X platform because I don't really need all those cores. I don't need all that RAM anymore. The servers can just grab what they need when they need it or Plex can just grab the resources it needs when I watch a movie. So I don't need these like very powerful systems anymore that just are hosting virtual machines and all those cores are just being tied up constantly running Windows or whatever operating system and then the services that are on there. Yes, I would have liked a bit more future proofness, but I think this worked out pretty well. And I may change things in the future, but that remains to be seen. And if I do, that's more than likely because of content and less likely because there was actually a problem with the current configuration. One last note before we go. So I would highly recommend checking out the previous video where we checked out the AC Infinity Airframe T7 and or at least checking out the blog where I wrote about basically this video as well as the previous video that I continue to update with temperatures over the course of year. Basically since I purchased the Airframe T7 to today and the next month. And I'm gonna keep updating that till maybe December or January of next year. So definitely check out the link below to the website for the blog or the previous video about the Airframe T7. And with all of that being said, I want to thank you guys all for watching and gals, and I will see you all next time. Cheers!